are listening to Julia's Trucking Cafe News Hour. Hello and welcome back to Julia's Trucking Cafe Trucking News Hour. I'm Julia, your host. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And first off in our news, here in a little while, I'll be discussing what kind of excuse this driver gave, how come he didn't secure his load. That'll be later on in the show. Just a quick teaser. But first, California Highway Patrol calls out a truck driver for a fuel pump blunder. He runs off with the nozzle still in his fuel tank, which all of us can do. So they have a Facebook page and they poked fun at the truck driver for his forgetfulness after he fueled at a Nevada truck stop. This occurred on January 19th. They captured, captioned this post on Facebook as, You done messed up, Aaron. So to any of the truck stops in Nevada, you might be missing something. Some of the Facebook users marveled at the truck driver's forgetfulness. Others admitted to have making the same mistake. Kevin says, happens a lot, more than most would believe. Worked at a Flying J for three years and lost count of how many big rigs and cars drove off with pump handles with the hoses still attached. Fawn says, oops, about as embarrassing as a motorcycle rider dropping their bike at the gas station. It happens and can happen to experienced drivers at least one time. Hope no other cars were damaged by the hose in traffic. And Kevin says, Kevin B. says, people make mistakes, I've done it myself, and I have to say it's one of the most embarrassing things that ever happened to me. Fortunately, the service station must keep a supply of these because it apparently happens all of the time. And a Tesla runs into the back of a car hauler, and the, car, uh, the Tesla was on autopilot. A Tesla owner shared a dash cam video of a collision with a truck that he said was the fault of the car's autopilot system. Um, Mr. Zavari uh, shared this clip on Twitter around January 17th. He said, a happy uh, Model 3 owner here, driven 20,000 uh, miles on autopilot, wondering why my car started moving when the semi in front of me was stopped, why all sensors suddenly ignore the giant semi. Tesla has repeatedly stated that autopilot is intended as a driver assist system and is not a fully autonomous driving system. From their website, autopilot and full self-driving capability are intended for use with a fully attentive driver. You don't sleep behind the wheel, you don't play on your phone, you don't do any of that stuff. With their hands on the wheel and prepare to take over at any moment should it become necessary. While these features are designed to become more capable over time, the currently enabled features do not make the vehicle fully autonomous. You know, you should know better for crying out loud. And a pickup truck strikes a trucker, a FedEx driver, pulling doubles that was standing on his steps of his rig on a Florida interstate. The Florida Highway Patrol says that charges are pending against a motorist after he allegedly struck and killed a semi-truck driver. The crash occurred around 4.15 on Wednesday morning on I-4 in Volusia County, Florida. Police say the 52-year-old truck driver hauling double trailers pulled off onto the emergency lane of westbound I-4 and was standing on the driver's steps outside the truck when the crash occurred. Troopers say the 21-year-old Travis Hudo driving a Dodge pickup truck for unknown reasons veered off the interstate into the emergency lane and struck both the driver and the truck. The truck driver was thrown under his own semi truck by the force of the collision and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Hudo wasn't hurt. This is the reason why I tell everybody it is illegal, illegal against the law to stop in the emergency lane on the shoulder of the interstate. Unless you are broke down, you better have your cotton picking four ways on and your triangles. You do not stop to take a whiz. You do not stop for your 30 minute break. You don't stop for your 10 hour break. Cars and trucks 
get to an off-ramp or an on-ramp, and that's not even safe. This is piss-poor trip planning. I'm telling you. You know, it's just ridiculous anymore out here. And yes, these are the things that tick me off. That, yeah, I get real passionate about. So if you don't like my passion, well, then click off. Because I get very passionate about stupidity. I cannot stand stupidity out here. There's no room for it. Anyway, on to the next article. In happy news, a trucker mom gives birth in a New York truck stop bathroom. And the sign says, kid friendly. A special delivery was made Jan the week of January 17th as the baby was born at the Jim's truck stop. According to the report, a truck driver couple thought to be from Minnesota stopped in on a Friday night. During their visit, the staff heard screams coming from the women's restroom. When employees went inside, they found that the woman, who was eight months pregnant, had just given birth. Manager Brian Deegan said, I didn't believe it when my employee said she just had a baby inside the ladies' room. I thought they were joking. They weren't joking. So I called right away, and the ambulance was here within less than two minutes, and she was taken, and the baby was taken to the hospital. Mom and baby Nora were both released from the hospital with a clean bill of health. So congratulations to the parents of a brand new bouncing baby girl. What a way to have a child. I was driving a truck with my youngest son and I was seven and a half months pregnant. Almost had him on George Washington Bridge in New York City. But needless to say, almost 26 years later, he's still a bouncing baby boy. But anyway, I digress. And the truck driver decided to go around a road closure and follow his GPS. Troopers say a missing truck driver found on the Snowy Mountain Road, in my last video that I talked about, followed his GPS. The California Highway Patrol provided additional details about a stand, stranded truck driver who was rescued after two days of being stuck on a mountain road. He ended up following his GPS. The uh, California Highway Patrol's Northern Division Air Operations described the circumstances leading to the rescue. They were able to help the fly in and help the stranded driver after the weather cleared. Um, a gold Volvo tractor with a white trailer was reported overdue by their company. The driver was supposed to be at a specified location at 6 o'clock in the morning on this January 16th. GPS locations for the tractor placed the vehicle on Big Bend Road west of State Route 299. Due to inclement weather and poor roadway conditions, no aircraft or vehicles were able to conduct a thorough search of the area. And then on the 18th at approximately 8 a.m. they took off and the uh, Air 11 responded to the area to search for the vehicle. After about an hour of looking for it, they located it on Summit Glade Road, approximately 20 miles from the last GPS location. They made contact with the driver uh, via the public address speaker, and he appeared to be uninjured. They, uh, H-14 responded to the scene and landed to rescue the driver. H-14's crew contacted the driver, confirming he was uninjured, transported the driver back to Benton Air Park, and he was insisted in finding a hot meal and a ride to a local hotel. And in sad news, a driver hauling a load of beer gets ejected. Texas police say that a truck driver did not survive an early morning single vehicle crash that left the roadway and littered beer cans. The crash happened in, right around in January, in January, just before 4 a.m. around Houston. Police say a 35-year-old truck driver hauling a load of Bud Light beer cans on I-45 at Farmer's Market 1960 when he left the interstate, crashed through a guardrail, then hit a tree. Spewing beer, uh, beer cans sorry, everywhere. Excuse me. The truck driver was ejected from his vehicle onto the interstate during the crash. The impact of the tree sheared open the tractor portion of the 18-wheeler and unfortunately, the driver was not restrained by a seatbelt. He was ejected from the vehicle and landed on the outside lane of 45. He passed away at the scene. No other injuries were reported. 
The incident shut down both portions of the interstate for several hours for investigation and extensive cleanup efforts. Rest in peace, truck driver. You have done your, you've hauled your last load. We have it from here. And our next story, a man is sentenced for scheming to steal a trucking company from its owners. This was reported back January 23rd. Federal authorities say that he used the trucking company revenue to pay for personal housing, furniture, and a family vacation. Federal authorities say that an Indiana man was sentenced to more than four years in prison for a fraud scheme where he allegedly perpetrated against the owners of a trucking company. Back in January 17th, Douglas Ray Thomas was sentenced to 51 months in prison two years of supervised release, and $692,457.13 in restitution in the U.S. District Court in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thomas had previously pled guilty to one count of wire fraud and one count of failing to account for and pay for employment taxes. The IRS will always get you. So according to the scheme by the IRS, Internal Revenue Revenue Service. Most of us know what it means. The uh, defendant's guilty plea and documents filed in court from September 2013 through June 2014. Thomas divided, devised, and excuse me, and executed a fraud scheme to gain control over the assets of revenue of Northwoods Trucking, a transportation company located in Duluth, Minnesota. On October 18, 2013, Thomas and the former owners of the trucking company entered into a stock purchase agreement in which Thomas agreed to purchase all outstanding shares of the company for $730,000. Part of the agreement, Thomas agreed to make an initial payment within five days of closing. Despite failing to make the initial payment as well as subsequent payments pursuant to this agreement, Thomas assumed control of the company, I'm sure he gave him a boatload of excuses, in December of 2013, and shortly thereafter began transferring Northwoods Truck and Business Revenue into a bank account that he alone controlled. According to the defendant's guilty plea and documents filed in court, while he owned and operated the company, he repeatedly failed to pay many of the company's liabilities, the bills including fuel and insurance for the company's trucks, payroll to employees, and employment taxes that were due to the IRS. Like I said, IRS will always get your ass. Instead, Thomas used a significant portion of Northwoods Trucking Business Revenue to pay personal expenses and debts. In other words, he spent it on himself, including housing, furniture, and a family vacation. The total loss caused by the fraud scheme is approximately $730,000 in addition to $57,792.13 in employment taxes that he failed to pay to the IRS. The IRS Criminal Investigation Division and the FBI assisted in the investigation into the scheme. I'm like, what people will frickin' do for money, you know it? Now get a load of this story. A former NFL star is on the run after allegedly assaulting a truck driver. Police have issued, this is back in January, they issued an arrest warrant a warrant for former professional football player who is accused of assaulting a moving truck driver. On Wednesday, January 22nd, police in Hollywood, Florida issued an arrest warrant for 31-year-old wide receiver Antonio Brown on charges of blur- burglary with battery. The charges are related to an incident that occurred on Tuesday at Brown's Florida home. And that began when a moving truck driver arrived to drop off a load of items that he had been hired to deliver from Brown's California residence. The dri- truck driver said when he w- that when he asked for the $4,000 payment, Brown refused to pay. The truck driver said that he then attempted to leave the scene with Brown's property still in his truck, you know, hold it for ransom, and that Brown responded by throwing a rock and damaging his truck. TMZ reports that as the argument escalated, Brown climbed up on the truck, forced his way into the cab, and began to hit the truck driver. The truck driver said that Brown's trainer, Glenn Holt, took the keys from the ignition and unloaded Brown's belongings from the trailer. The truck driver says that he suffered cuts and scratches from the assault. 
Holt has since been arrested, but police have not yet taken Brown into custody. And why not? Brown has not played in the F NFL since he was released by the New England Patriots during the week of the 2019 season after he was accused of rape. This episode of Julia's Truck at Cafe is brought to you by My Patriot Supply. As truck drivers, we all know what it's like to be at a shipper's or receiver's and have to wait to be loaded for hours on end. Am I right? Especially produce coolers and paper mills. That's why you need to be prepared with extra food in your truck. Especially with the bad weather coming in, like it is over here in Kansas. Up in the Dakotas and Minnesota, 90 was shut down, Interstate 94 was shut down, along with 29. What are you going to do if there's no food and a truck stop was without power? That's why you need to stay prepared with My Patriot Supply. Now it's not what you're thinking. My Patriot Supply is delicious emergency food. They have food kits that are good up to 25 years. They come in a slimline tote that you can easily store in your food pantry or under your bunk. I could speak from experience. After living through Hurricane Katrina, we were th without power for 10 days, me, my mother and son and I. If it weren't for the MREs that were flown into us, we wouldn't have any food. There was four 60-foot pine trees that broke in half during that storm and crossed my driveway and landlocked me in. That's when my Patriot Supply would have come in handy. If I knew then what I know now about my Patriot Supply, I definitely have some, food, some of this food stockpiled in my pantry. Now for a limited time, you could get a one week supply of food in a handy and neat looking ammo can, like you see here, for just $39. Look at all that food you get. It's a week's worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinners, just for 39 bucks. How do you get it? Where do you go, do you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Just go to my website at juliastruckatcafe.com, click on the emergency food supply tab, Scroll down and click on any of the images to get find out more information and get yours today. They even offer gluten-free food for under $100. Winter weather is here. What would you do if the interstate was shut down, just like I was talking about? You need to get My Patriot Supply and get it today. Welcome back to Julia's Truck and Cafe Truck and News Hour. Now let's get back to the news. And two truckers, couple, that were roughed up by security cards score a major win. A husband and wife trucking team say that they have succeeded in fighting the criminal charges laid against them in the wake of a violent altercation with security guards at a distribution center in Mississippi. Now, if you listen to my podcast, this is before I started the video portion of the show. I reported on this, and this happened uh, back in September of 2018, so it was a year ago. Uh, they were at Metro Foods DC in Olive Branch, Mississippi, just to refresh y'all's memory. The incident began when the Kirkers arrived at the DC distribution center to pick up what they thought was an ordinary grocery load. They later learned that the load was actually a much higher profile pharmaceuticals for the CDC. The Kirkers, who were not familiar with the security procedures at the facility, tried to leave and then became involved in a physical altercation with security guards. Both Clinton and Shannon Kirker say they suffered various bruises and scrapes at the hands of the security guards. Shannon Kirker was taken to the hospital for treatment. Clinton issued charges of assault and disorderly conduct following the incident. Shannon wasn't charged. Now, in January, January 2019, Clinton Kirker, a year ago, was found guilty on a charge of interfering with a business in disorderly conduct in DeSoto County Court, a charge that Kirker said could result in six months probation, 30 days in jail with a $500 fine, and, you know, loss of his livelihood. And, of course, he posted the video to Facebook. I, I hate when they do that. If you're going to post a video, post it to YouTube. So, Because Facebook doesn't like me sharing anything. YouTube, eh, not so much. I mean, they don't really, they're not as picky as Facebook is. So I can't share it with you all because of the fact of it's on Facebook. So anyway, Kirker said this basically states that we as truck drivers have no rights. We have to do whatever security guards tell us 
rent the cops, I call them, even though they are not the police. The Kirkers vowed to keep fighting and filed an appeal. And in January last month, the Kirkers finally got the result they were looking for when they appeared in, count in court only to learn that the prosecution had dropped the charge, the disorderly conduct charge against Mr. Kirker. He filed the appeal and almost a year later they dropped the disorderly conduct, interfering with a business charge, so not guilty on a simple, simple assault and charges dropped on the second charge. He explained that, quote, the guards did not show up in court. He feels that it is because the prosecution neglected to subpoena the guards and didn't want to prosecute him with only a video. Not only did the Kirkers defeat the criminal charges they were facing, they also say that they filed a civil suit against Metro Foods, security contractor Paragon Systems Inc., and the security guards individually in, that were involved in the physical uh, altercation. And uh, they're, uh, char they're filing for physical and emotional damages that they endured. Excuse me on that. You can read Clinton Kirkers' detailed description uh, incident and see photos of an injury in the Facebook post that's in this article that'll be in the show notes on my website. And Pilot announces a huge name change. On January 23rd, North America Truck Stop Group Pilot Flying J announced that the company would transition to a new corporate name. Company leaders announced that Knoxville, Tennessee headquartered Pilot Flying J would be moving forward with a new name, Pilot Company. The new name is intended to serve as an umbrella that captures the total portfolio of the business as it continues to span its retail and energy operations. Uh. Company also debuted a new logo intended to harken back to Pilot's origins. Really? Really? You know, Flying J, I remember that back in the day, Flying J was only out west. You didn't see them Midwest or East Coast whatsoever. They were only out west. And Mormons had them. And then the Mormons sold out to Pilot. And in other news, a man who beat a sleeping truck driver with rocks gets a short sentence. An Idaho man who pled guilty to charges related to beating a truck driver during a robbery attempt was sentenced to prison. January 23rd, 24-year-old Stormy Ray Adaki was sentenced to 57 months in federal prison to be followed by three years of supervised release, according to the U.S. Office District of uh, Attorney's Office District of uh, Idaho. Araki already served six months in a tribal jail, so his sentence was reduced from the original 63 months for time served. He pled guilty to charge of assault resulting in serious bodily injury in October of 2019. I also uh, reported on this, and to refresh your memory just a little bit, um, Missouri-based truck driver Amos Phillips was asleep at the side of his truck. He was parked at the TP gas station right off of I-15 near Fort Hall Casino. Phillips had visited the casino on a 34-hour restart. Phillips later told police that he was asleep and an unknown ma male, later identified as an Akai, broke into the cab of his truck and demanded money. When Phillips said they didn't have any, he reportedly beat him with rocks in both that were both in both hands. Phillips survived the attack but suffered a broken nose, a bro broken orbital bone, which is right around your eye, and a brain hemorrhage that doctors say could have resulted in him dying. A news release from the U.S. Attorney's Office describes how the investigators identified him, and you can read that for yourself in this article. I'm also trying, to got a lot of articles to get to in this video, so I'm trying to keep this brief. Phillips later told the Idaho's, Idaho State Journal that externally he's fine, but from the beating, I may never be able to go back to driving. He has a hematoma or blood clot on the brain, and they have me on very serious medications. Because of that, he can't drive commercially anymore. In Idaho, the charge of assault resulting in serious bodily injury, punishable by up to 10 years in prison, the maximum fine of $250,000, and a term of supervised release up to three years. And he only got a 63 months, you know, so now he has to do 57 months. Let's see, that's, how many is that? Uh, not quite five years. 
he got for that. So he got like half of the normal sentence for that. Wow, wow. And our next story. Two are dead in a massive explosion at a Houston warehouse. Authorities say that at least two people were killed in an explosion at a manufacturing facility. The explosion occurred before 4.30 a.m. at Watson Grinding and Manufacturing Facility in Northwest Houston, Texas. Residents report hearing and feeling the blast 30 miles away from the explosive explosion site. Several homes were knocked off of their foundations. Houston police say that the debris field is about a half a mile wide. They confirmed that two people were killed in the explosion and at that time it wasn't clear how many were injured. Authorities say that they do not believe that the explosion was an act of terror or intentionally caused at the time. Houston firefighters say that they have secured a leaking tank of propylene on the facilities grounds and it's a Propylene is flammable and can explode. Watson Grinding and Manufacturing provides machining and thermal spray services according to their website. And a logistics company in Kansas announces mass layoffs. Hundreds of employees will be out of work after a global logistics company cuts jobs at a Wichita location. D.B. Schenker will lay off 255 employees at its Wichita location. The mass layoffs are related to the halted production of the Boeing 737 MAX. D.B. Schenker was the main logistics provider for Spirit Aerosystems DC Distribution Center. Spirit has announced its own mass layoffs related to the Boeing 737 MAX production halt. Spirit says that approximately 2,800 employees will be laid off. According to the company's website, D.B. Schenker provides land transport, air and ocean freight, contract logistics, and supply chain management and employs about 76,000 people worldwide. So yeah, there's a lot of companies getting, uh, employees getting laid off from different, you know, different areas of transportation and logistics, you know, all over the country. And our next story, a woman is charged with homicide after a crash that killed two truck drivers. Now a warning, if you are under the age of 18, the next photo is going to be very graphic. So if you have little ones watching this, you know, they don't need to see this, this next slide that I'm going to show you. I have to do my, I want to do my little bit of a uh, uh, waiver of liability disclaimer. A Georgia motorist is facing several charges following a deadly crash early on a Friday morning. The crash occurred around 1.30 on I-85 in Gwinnett County, Georgia. When police arrived on the scene, they found that two tractor trailers and a passenger vehicle had collided in the southbound lanes of I-85 in Swanee. The Gwinnett County Police described the multiple vehicle crash in a news release. Based on the preliminary investigation at that time, evidence at the scene and witness statements, it appears as though the incident began with the driver of the passenger car, Leah Knox, age 28, lost control of her gray 2009 Mitsubishi Eclipse, which you can't even tell where it is, and made impact with a guardrail on the right side of the roadway. One of the tractor trailers struck the Mitsubishi as it reflected off the guardrail and re-entered the roadway. This truck was being driven by Robert Kent, age 63. The tractor trailer continued forward and struck the center median wall. The movement of the second tractor trailer still being under investigation, but investigators are looking into the possibility that it made impact with the Mitsubishi and or the other truck after their, their impacts. So in other words, the first truck ran into the car. After the car hit the guardrail, she bounced off, bounced back into traffic, then turned around, he hit her, then the second truck hit probably both of them. Alcohol isn't suspected to be a factor in the crash, police say. Authorities say that they suspect that weather could have contributed to the crash. And in other news, I know I say that a lot, 
A six million dollar lawsuit is filed in a trucker's fatal plunge off of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. And yes, I've been across this bridge. And you see way off at the horizon on this photo, that's where the tunnel is, where you go down underneath the water and you come back up again. The widow of the driver that says, per the Chesapeake Bay Bridge own wind policy, her husband should have never been allowed on the bridge. The wife of a truck driver who lost his life when his rig fell off the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel in 2017 has filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit alleging that he should never been allowed on the bridge in the first place. Last week, Billy Joe Chin filed suit against the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel for $6 million for negligence in the death of her husband, Joseph Chin. Joseph Chin died on February 9th, 2017. And as you see here in this picture, through the bridge railing, that is the trailer of his truck that's floating in the water before it sunk. Joseph Chin was spotted after the crash standing on the trailer and was rescued by a Navy helicopter as he was floating in the water, but died on the way to the hospital from hypothermia. So the trailer was, he was standing on top of it, and then as it was going down, he ended up getting into the water and he passed away on the way to the hospital from hypothermia. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel owned wind policy forbids truck hauling empty or light trailers from crossing if the wind speeds are higher than 46 miles an hour. And apparently they were a lot faster than that. And the new Blitz is coming. Normally the Blitz is in June. Now it's gonna be the 5th of May through the 7th of May and inspectors are expecting to crack down on driver requirements during this year's Blitz. On January 27th, the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance announced that International Road Trek Check 2020 will take place May 5th through the 7th throughout the U.S. The CVSA also said that this year's area of emphasis will be on driver requirements. The CVSA points to Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration data that shows in 2019 3.36 million commercial motor vehicle inspections were conducted during these inspections. 944,794 driver violations were discovered, of which 195,545 were out of service conditions. In other words, they told you to park it and don't drive because they found some sort of a violation where you were not safe to operate your vehicle. During road check, most drivers will undergo the North American Standard Level 1 inspection. In other words, an inspection from top to bottom. The tractor, the trailer, the motor, the lights, the brakes, the tires, they inspect everything. Um, it, they give a breakdown of their procedure in this article that you can find in the show notes on our website under the cafe menu. Um, Quote, with last year's federal electronic logging device full compliance mandate here in the U.S., the Alliance decided that this year's international road check would be the perfect opportunity to revisit all aspects of roadside inspection driver requirements. The CVSA elected to conduct road check earlier this year, hoping that most of the inspectors will take, inspections will take place in more favorable weather than in early June when road check usually occurs. Uh, the Sergeant Samus added, we're aware that some drivers opt to stay off the roadways during the three days of international road check. Although there is certainly an increase in the number of inspections conducted during it, it's important to remember that inspections are conducted every day of the year. Wah, 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 wah. Inspections, inspectors will be increasing commercial motor vehicles the day before international road check start and the day after it ends, as well as any other day of the year. Like I said, wah, 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 wah. They're, you know, they're paid to say that garbage. But yeah, most of us drivers, the smart ones, stay off the road. You know, we just like, uh, yeah, we'll take a 34 hour reset right then. And now for our top story. Driver gives a head scratching excuse for not strapping down his load. Now this is, if you can't see the picture real clearly, this is a load of lumber and right there. 
it wasn't secured at all. No straps, no nothing. Officers in Georgia say they caught this truck driver who had an unusual reason for his load securement violation. On January 27th, the Georgia Department of Public Safety shared on Facebook detailing the violation of the week. Uh, the driver thought that the load was heavy enough not to be strapped down. He didn't use a single strap and he didn't think all that wood was going to shift. I'm like, really? Really? Yeah. Alrighty then. And in other news, this guy was going too fast around the West Virginia Turnpike, which is very curvy and very, you know, um, real bad per turns. You go between 55 and 60 mile an hour is um, the average posted speed around these curves because I travel a West Virginia Turnpike a lot. And as you can see, I, the load is starting to shift. This might be a load of lumber. That load is starting sh to shift a little bit. And uh, back in January, and it ended up toppling the truck. And he lost the load. Hopefully the driver was okay. So I want to thank everybody for watching and subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you enjoy my show and you would like to be a patron, there is a link in the description below and also please hit the red button please subscribe so you know when i upload more videos and i get them all done and and posted and uploaded and that kind of thing so thank you so much please subscribe to my email list on the website at juliastruckacafe.com i could send you the show notes right to your inbox i know everybody has a life i'm doing this because i guess i don't have a life but anyway thank you again so much for joining me i greatly greatly appreciate it thank you so much we just hit over a hundred youtube subscribers so thank you so much can we say two can we go for 200 now i'm working on 200 i want to go one one 100 at a time so let's try to help me get up to 200 subscribers so I also have a lot of different things going on. Check out the How To channel as well, Julia's Truck and Cafe hyphen How To channel, where I share my cooking videos on there, and I also have the recipes on the website uh, under Julia's Truck and Cafe .com. Then go to the cafe on menu, and you'll see the cafe menu on the toolbar. Tap on that. There'll be a drop-down menu, and then you'll find everything under the cafe menu, just like in a restaurant. So this is kind of like my virtual cafe, but it's in the sleeper of my truck. So anyway, thank you so much again. I hope everyone has a very safe week. Keep the shiny side up out there, and we'll see you next time. You have been listening to Julia's Truck and Cafe Truck and News Hour. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Take care. Have a blessed day.